In this video, we're gonna take a look at a blue-black ink by Roher and Klinger, Lipsflager Schwartz. Nailed it. <laughs> As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, if you like blue-black inks, down in the description, there's a link to all of those as a playlist. I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. Let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some spots of shading like the Q and the K in quick, the H in the 15 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 25 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation because we're really not getting very much at all, even though there is some in the extra fine. And the smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all the writing samples are done with this Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, this Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a D-like alpha with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Now you're gonna notice that this is the wrong ink in this pen at this moment, and I had to go back and change it right after I got doing this part. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, some minor ghosting going on. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 23 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 38 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and we don't get any. The smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this is an incredibly interesting blue black because when it pushes up, we really do see a brown up there and a very, very dark purple at the top. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked into water. And you see some of that purple is trailing its way all the way up. Even though it still makes it to the top, it moves very slowly, leaving some in the filter paper. All of that brown is still pushing its way, but the water didn't travel nearly as far. It does make me think there, there's probably not going to be much resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 17 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 28 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both said no color variation and there was None. The smear test says you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, don't use this in a note-taking situation because there's an extreme amount of blowout. That makes sense when you look at the water, which is really reactivating and lifting a lot of it. We only see a small spot where white of the paper is coming through. It did only take water to get it out of my pen. Now, the pen flush does everything that water does and a bit faster. You see a lot more of the white of the paper coming through. One third bleach solution, you're not going to need it, but it completely obliterated it off the page. The next writing sample is done on yellow Rhodia paper. This is done here so that we can try and see if there's any tone change that goes on because this is such a dark ink and I was really hoping that it would lighten it enough that we would start to see some of the blue coming through, but we don't. It still very much looks as a black ink and with that we can see just how uh, opaque this particular ink is. Definitely will work in that professional environment without a problem. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Roher and Klinger, Lipsinger Schwartz, has a viscosity of 1.95, making it just a little bit wetter than normal. 
Now, if you're interested in how all the viscosity stuff is done, there's a link to that video down in the description. The next writing sample is done on black and red paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and eight seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could probably recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Roher and Klinger, Lipsinger Swartz, has an average dry time of 24 seconds, making this take a bit longer than normal to dry. The last writing sample is done on white lines paper. Now there's a lot of spots where you see the ink has gotten quite deep into the paper. It has not come through, it hasn't touched the page underneath, but it does lead to an extreme amount of ghosting. It also means I don't know that you could use the back of this page if you needed to. The 1.1 has no feathering, which I was a little surprised with. No uh, spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and six seconds to dry. Really did very well here. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and seven seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation because there is none. And a smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Roher and Klinger, Lip Slinger, Swartz, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a red ink from Graf von Faber-Castell, one of the few red tones I really care for, Garnet. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So, what do I think of Roher and Klinger, Lip Slinger, Swartz? I began this whole thing with the wrong ink and I fixed it, just to remind you of how blue that was to start with. As a blue-black, I find this just too black. I don't see any of the blue come through in the writing. While the performance is good and feels nice as I write, I just can't see the need of a bottle of this ink. However, it is a very nice black. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? Since it's so black, let's just treat it as a black and go with a nice wet medium or wet fine to really get a good solid all the way through, no shade, no color variation, black. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna look at pen BBS number 179.